All right, and welcome back. Um, this is going to be the last video. At least I'm going to try real hard to make it the last video in this tutorial series. And this is where we're going to learn to animate um, individual image planes or subjects of your parallax setup. Um, and in this case, I'm going to animate uh, the kid here in the center here. So I'll just tell you something real quickly. Um, when I chose this photo, I was really thinking about the camera moving through the photograph or into the photograph and thinking about the camera animation. Unfortunately, I wasn't really thinking too much about the movement of the kid. Um, so he's not the best subject to animate. Um, his movement is naturally is that he's moving forward. He's moving through the scene. He's moving down the street. Um, and so it's not the best to animate uh, for parallax, but I'll show you how to do it. Um, and then when you work on your own images, photographs or otherwise, um, you'll have much more uh, trained eye for thinking about what kind of animation for your subjects. Um, okay, so I've selected my camera, and if you watched my last video, I showed you how to manage your keyframes down here in the dope sheet editor. I deleted my keyframes and I changed it around a little bit. This time, instead of moving into the shot, I just did a pan. And you can see I'm panning um, up. So I'm going from a down position here by the feet, rising up and ending um, up here at his head. So when we animate his head and maybe his arms tilting a little bit, uh, you'll see that. Um, and you can see in the right hand view over here, camera view, you can see the parallax effect um, occurring, even though it's not rendered. So if you can see it here in the preview, um, it means it's going to probably look pretty good um, when it's rendered. Okay, so here's how we do it. Um, first thing we need to do is, um, there's a couple ways you can do this in Blender. One way that's been around for quite some time, uh, and if you're experienced with Blender you might know about this technique already, is using something called shape keys. Um, and if you know that, it will work. Um, I'm going to show a different way, um, and it's a little bit new to me, um, and I think I like it more um, than shape keys, but it's very similar. So if you know about shape keys, um, check this out. Um, okay, so we're going to do it with an add-on, a Blender add-on. So we're going to come up here to Blender's file menu. We're going to come down here to User Preferences. We're going to click on Add-ons. And then over here in the search box, we're going to type in, um, the add-on is called Anim all, as in animate all. So just type in animal. Uh, almost sounds like animal. Um, and you can sort of see it here. I know it's dark, um, but there it is right there, animal. And what you want to do is you want to activate the little checkbox there that installs it. And then you're going to want to click on save user settings. And when you do that, it makes it permanent. Okay, so now animal is set up. Now what you're going to want to do to be able to see the animal controls, let me resize my windows here a little bit, um, you're going to want to make this toolbar here on the left uh, a little wider. So you put your mouse pointer here on the edge until you see the double arrows and you can change the width of it there. So it gets a little crowded, I know. Um, if you don't see this toolbar, toolbar here on the left, you can press, you can put your mouse pointer in the window, press T, and that will make it appear or disappear. Okay, so now I want to select the kid. So you can try right clicking over here until you select the kid, but if you're having any trouble doing that, you can come up here to the top right hand corner where you have your outliner editor and you can adjust the height of it and you can find the kid layer or whatever, whoever it is that you want to animate, and you can just left click and select them. Okay. So now that I have them, um, what I need to do is I need to um, I need to add more vertices to him so that I can control him like a uh, like a puppet. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to press Tab to enter Edit Mode, and you'll see that he's the whole plane is completely selected. He only has four vertices right now because it's just a simple plane. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press um, W, and that's going to bring up a specials menu and right at the top here you're going to see an option called subdivide and when I do subdivide you're going to see nothing 
um, what it does is it subdivides uh, vertically and horizontally going through. So now immediately, instead of one plane, I now have one, two, three, four. So it subdivides it by four. Try not to click around when you're in the subdivide menu. And I want you to look over here in the bottom left-hand corner of the toolbar. And you'll see some options here for the subdivide tool. And the only option I want you to look at is number of cuts. And right now it's set to one. If I go ahead and click and I increase that, now it's set to two. And you can see that each cut now got subdivided uh, into another four. Um, so now I've got quite a bit more. Um, you can keep going up, and the highest you can go by clicking is 10. So that's what 10 looks like. And 10 is actually not enough. Um, it's not the more means the better, but um, in this case, we definitely want um, what's called, um, we want what, uh, more of a dense mesh. We want more vertices, especially around the kid, uh, so that we can control him. So what you can do is you can click in the middle of the cut box here, and you can type in a bigger number. So I'm going to type in 20 and press return, and you can see what 20 looks like. And this might look like a, a lot, but I really want cuts going right down the middle here. Um, so let's say if I tried typing in, say, 30 and press return. So that's obviously looking better. It's actually not as dense as I want. So I'm going to show you a little technique that I do. So I'm pretty happy with it here. And this is 30 for me, so I suggest you try the same number. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is to get out of the subdivide tool here, I'm just going to simply press A to deselect all. You'll notice that the subdivide tools go away over here. I'm going to now subdivide it one more time and you'll see what happens and why. I'm going to press A to select all again. I'm going to go back into the subdivide tool by pressing W. I'm going to choose subdivide one more time and instantly it gets quite a bit um, more um, dense because it took every single one and cut it right down the middle. And that's really what I wanted. Is I wanted more cuts going down the middle so I had a much more dense mesh so I could control um, the kit. Now this looks like a lot and this, especially if I zoom out you won't even see the kit anymore because it's such a dense mesh. Okay so we're going to clean this up now. So I'm going to press A to get out of the subdivide and I'm going to I'm going to change Um, I'm going to clean this up a lot. Um, I only need the vertices around the kid. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to select um, just the vertices um, around the kid, and then I'm going to delete everything else around it. So the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to press A to select all, and then I'm going to deselect um, the vertices that make up the kid. And the way I'm going to do that um, is, is pretty cool. Um, I'm going to do what's called circle select. And so I'm going to press the letter C for circle select. And you should now see a little circle going around your mouse cursor. If you scroll your mouse wheel forwards and backwards, you can change the size of the circle. Okay. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to deselect the vertices that make up the kid. So if I were to if I were to hold down the mouse wheel so I'm just holding down my, my scrolling mouse wheel and I'm just moving over the vertices that make up the kid you'll see that they are deselecting. It's almost like paint brushing, like painting. So you want to you want to go really all the way around and this part takes a little trial and error, and I'll show you why in a second. Now, let's say I deselect too much. Let's say I go like way out here, like that. Okay, so how do I reselect those? Well, you're going to lift up on your mouse wheel, and now you're going to just hold down the left mouse button, and left mouse button will reselect. So left mouse button to reselect, middle mouse wheel to deselect. Okay? All right, so I'm going to purposefully select his left arm. Now if you try to do anything 
like zoom in and move around, you'll see that you're stuck in circle select mode. All it does is change the brush size here. So to get out of circle select mode, you have to press the escape key. When you press the escape key, now you can zoom in and zoom out and all that. So if you notice as I zoom in, you notice that his left elbow is still, the vertices are still selected. So here's what we want to do. We basically want to delete everything that's selected. And what we'll be left with is just the vertices around the kid and a much cleaner view. So watch what happens to his left arrow and watch the rest of his body to see if I made a mistake. So I'm going to delete all these verts. I'm going to press X and I'm going to say delete. And you'll notice that I lost his left arm. I lost a little bit of his right hand. I lost some of his left leg and some of his left feet. So clearly I need to undo. I'm going to press Control Z to undo. And I need to deselect more. So I'm going to go back into Circle Select, C, and I'm just going to hold down my mouse wheel and I'm going to go and really make sure that I got these here. Now if you look closely at his right hand you might be wondering well why why did his hand get deleted or why did part of his leg get deleted? You don't have any of the vertices right around it um, like over here you don't have any of the vertices um, right here by his leg. Well these vertices that are closest by uh, share the edges here. So if I delete these vertices here, these are going to be connected, so they're going to be deleted as well. So what you have to be on the lookout for is shared vertices. So the rule is, I'm going to go back into circle mode, I'm going to hold down the mouse wheel, and I'm just going to deselect these guys as well. So the general rule is you have to go a little bit beyond the area you want. So now I've gone a little bit further, I've gone one further than the hand, and now the hand should be safe. And again, I'm just going to go ahead, go a little bit further beyond the feet. And once you do this once or twice, you'll get the, you'll get the hang of it. Go up here, so make sure I don't clip his head. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. I'm going to press Escape to get out of Circle Select mode. And now here's the real test. Press X, delete the vertices, and look, go all the way around the perimeter of our subject. Make sure that nothing got clipped off. His feet look good. Okay, so everything looks pretty good. Okay, so um, that is pretty much it. You'll see that the kid is there. Uh, he's been subdivided um, and cleaned up, and it's much easier on the eyes, and it's going to be easier to animate. So I apologize. I did lie a little bit. Um, instead of making this video 45 minutes long and boring you to death, um, I'm going to make one last video, which I think will bring us to an even 10 um, so there we go. So I'll do the animation in part 10 and then you'll be totally done. So thank you for hanging in there and I'll see you in the last part.